Hey, what's up YouTube family? This is Leah Boone with Monarch Ministry. Welcome to the channel. I wanted to come and give a word of encouragement today. I've been um, sitting on this word for a few days and um, I began to speak to the Lord about contentment the other day. Um, maybe three or four days ago. And I was talking to the Lord and I was like, thinking back on my life and I was like, you know, I've never really been in a place where I was truly happy. Every place that I've been, I've wanted to be somewhere else. There's a few times in my life where I can remember that I was content as a child growing up in Kentucky. I was very happy at that house in Denton for a while when I was seeking the Lord. I was in a place of peace, seeking God, trying to find answers. But there's not very many times in my life where I've had solace, um, where I've had true peace. And I was just trying to find some place where I could really rest in the Lord in where I'm at right now. And I think that by me sharing what I'm going through and talking to you about where I'm at, that you can maybe see yourself in my mindset in this situation and let the Holy Spirit speak through me to you for where you're at because I know that so many of us struggle with being content and just being in this place where the Lord has us, has us in our loneliness and our um, and our seeking the Lord and our not being where we want to be at the time in our waiting place with God it seems to be um, one of the hardest places to be in the waiting but I pray in Jesus name that he speaks through me and something that I say in this message to you to bring you some peace and comfort in the waiting so I was talking to God about being content and how I haven't ever been really content. I've always been in a situation or a place and wishing I was to that next thing already. But I really felt like the Lord was like wanting me to be content where I'm at right now not be always looking for that next thing, but just to be able to rest in him and find that peace and that joy where I'm at so I can enjoy my life as I'm going along. Because so many times in my life, I've always been looking for that next thing and I'm missing everything that's happening in the moment. And now with my daughter's passing, I'm regretting not just being in the moment. And so I want, I want so, so desperately to be there and enjoy everything that's happening right now. You know, we all want the promises of God and what he has to offer us, but I think what he was showing me is that um, I just need to learn to be content with him and the waiting because all those things that I want are going to come, you know, but we may as well enjoy the ride, the journey. I was feeling as such a heavy weight today, a tremendous 
weight of responsibility because there's so many of you in such need. And so I sought out some sisters in Christ for some covering because I just really felt this weight and um, I'm so grateful for the Lord sending these people to me that can help pray with me and for me and over this ministry. I joined a Bible study um, with some really great women and I'm so grateful for this, for where the Lord has led me. Um, so I've been talking to the Lord about this contentness and um, I felt like the Lord said to me on May 7th, this was at 9.38 p.m. He said, fear not for I am with you. Be not dismayed for I am your God. And in that moment, I just felt such a great assurance that he was there and he was reminding me that, you know, he did tell me wherever I go, he is with me. But then I thought, isn't that a Bible verse? I think that's a Bible verse. So I looked it up. It's Isaiah 41.10. Sure enough, it is a Bible verse. Let me turn to it in my Bible. Isaiah 41.10. This is just a very interesting side note. This number 411 keeps coming up. I, I did a word on the number 411. It means a... Um, in Greek Strong's Concordance, it is um, an indescribable gift, is what 411 means. But Isaiah 41:10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is faithful he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above everything that you can ask think or imagine according to the power that works within you that's ephesians 3 20. he is a miracle worker and he will do miracles in your life if you believe and have faith that he will he definitely will he does it for me every single day and I'm just praying for that power to be used through this ministry. I'm praying for miracles for you. I'm praying for the Holy Spirit to visit you, for you to have assistance by his angels, for you to have angelic visitation, for you to be able to see his miracles and his goodness this month of May and every month following. God is not slack concerning his promises. And if he told you something, he is going to come through with that for you. He took me to, um, he told me to read Philippians the other night. And I made a post in the community section, I believe, or Instagram somewhere about how, um, he who began the good work in you will continue it to the day of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't have the whole Bible memorized. You know, I am definitely a work in progress. And uh, God has just led me to a church that has um, um, those um, classes and all the, all the, um, the things, the Bible studies that you can go to. He led me to a great church here. In, in Dallas area and um, I just thank God for that because it's wonderful it's been so it's been awesome so far um, but Philippians 1 chapter 1 verse 6 so Philippians 1 6 is being confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ Okay, so that was confirmation for me for the unction that I got to post that about him 
continuing the work in you because I'm believing Jesus to continue that work within me. And I'm believing him to work through this ministry to help whoever is being sent here to hear a word of encouragement or to be uplifted in the spirit, to keep your faith going. Me showing up, even through all the warfare and um, the discouragement, whenever I can, whenever the Lord allows, <laughs> you know, and I can fight through the warfare, um, I, I want to be there for you. And I want to help encourage you through this process because it's not easy. It's not easy, but I think through community and building faith, that relying on each other, interceding for one another, that is really important. The intercession is is hugely important. Um, that we can help each other um, complete this walk of faith in Christ. So um, he told me to read Philippians. And then again, he took me back to Philippians. And I noted, I took note of this, where I wrote right here, um, it's Philippians 4, verse 10 and 11. So 4, 11, again, um, being content is what I wrote in the margin. I was like, wow, okay. So God's like talking to me again about being content. It says, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. But you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Now that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state that I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere. And in all things, I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you can do anything through God. But I think God will let us experience both not having anything and having much. And it fluctuates throughout our life. I mean, I've lost everything more than a couple of times. And I've had to learn to be okay with that, especially in my walk with God. But I was, you know, I was sitting with him these last few days and I'm just, I'm trying to learn to be more in touch with where I'm at so that he can work through me to be resting in him. And I pray that for each and every one of you that you are able to be content where you are so that you can hear the Holy Spirit and he can work through you and work miracles in your life. He also made mention of um, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. And you will seek my face and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. So be encouraged. God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above everything you can ask, think, or imagine, according to the power that works within you, Ephesians 3.20. Learn to be content where you're at. I think God can do mighty things when we are at one with his spirit, when we come into alignment with him and we are able to be at peace with where we are. Okay, I love you all so much with the love of Christ. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye. Okay, wait, so the Holy Spirit said I wasn't done. Okay, he wanted me to provide you the solution, duh with the contentness. So he gave me three keys to being content and um, some scripture. So, so how do we gain this contentness in the Lord? And we have to take these keys and we have to put them into practice. Um, the first key is to be grateful and thankful. So 
just every day in your everyday waking life, look for things to be grateful for, things that God has done for you. There's always someone somewhere else that has it worse than you. God is doing great things in your life and just the act of telling him thank you, saying thank you Jesus for this, thank you Jesus for whatever, you know, just being grateful for the things that you do have provides such a sense of relief and calmness and peace in the Lord. Um, key number two is watching your thoughts. Um, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, it says, um, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Your thoughts are really powerful and the enemy is going to implant thoughts into your mind that are not of God. And you have to, when those thoughts come, you have to pull them down and take them captive in that moment, right then, and extinguish all possibilities of that negative stuff that the enemy is just trying to make you think that does not align with God himself and his word. Also, um, second, I mean, Philippians chapter four. Let me go back to it. Where is it? Is that Philippians? Oh, that's Colossians. Sorry. Philippians chapter four, verse eight. It says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, it says, meditate on these things. Whatever things are true, whatever, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good rapport, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. So if we meditate on these things that are true and just and pure, then the God of peace will be with us. It's a promise. It says it right here in his Bible. So we are promised the peace of God when we continually meditate on good things. And the third key is um, to be in prayer and time alone with God. This is really key because this gets you into alignment and it helps you put on... Um, the breastplate, the what? The breastplate of righteousness, like it talks about in um, Ephesians. I'm turning to it. Hold on. Is it Ephesians? Yeah, Ephesians chapter six. Me and my sister in Christ that I met at Target the other day just talked about this. Hey, girl, if you're watching. <laughs> give you a shout out um okay ephesians chapter six we just talked about this um stand therefore having girded your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And as for me, that, that utterance may be given to me and that I may open my mouth boldly to, to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador ambassador in chains that it then in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak this is Paul Paul wrote the epistles which includes Ephesians and the Corinthians and um, Philippians that I've talked about in this video Paul used to be Saul he was a murderer a persecutor of Christians before God Jesus came to him on the road to Damascus 
and visited him and blinded him for three days and was like, you're murdering Christians and persecuting my people. What are you doing? I need you to stop. You're going to go and preach the gospel to the Jews and the Gentiles alike. <laughs> and he realized, it changed everything. It changed him completely. He went from Saul to Paul. So if he can do that, and a man who was a murderer, he can change you. He took me from where I was at the bottom, living in sin, all kinds of sin. And he completely transformed my life. God can do it for anybody. So just rest in him. Rest in him and be content at what he's doing with you right now. And enjoy, try to enjoy every single day. Because we don't know what tomorrow holds. God has a plan. But where, what is the plan for today? Where are we at today? Just rest assured in knowing that you are in his hand, that he loves you, and he has a plan for your life. Enjoy today. Okay, I love you all so much with the love of Christ. Y'all have a blessed day. Bye.